That's just fun. Hey, uh, in all four Gospels, uh, you will find uh, the same story of how Jesus calmed the storm. And for some of you, this is very relevant because you've got a storm going on in your life right now. And I want to talk to you about that today for a moment. Uh, it was toward the end of the day, and Jesus and his disciples had been ministering to the crowds. And the Bible says, leaving the crowd behind, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat. And as they were crossing the Sea of Galilee, this huge storm comes up on them. And uh, it was scary for them. Uh, uh, the waves were causing the water to come into the boat. It was, looked like it was going to tip over. And the disciples got all freaked out. And they were like, hey, whoa, we're all going to die. You know, that's, that's what they were feeling during the storm. Jesus was sleeping on a cushion in the stern of the boat during this whole thing, you know. And so the disciples, it says in Mark chapter 4, 38, the disciples woke Jesus up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Which is really bad theology coming from his disciples, right? Don't you care uh, that we're going to drown? I mean, that's what they're asking God, you know. And yet, that's how some people feel today, isn't it? Maybe you felt this way before. Lord, don't, don't you see what's happening here in my life? Uh, I know you could do something. You're God. You can do anything. Don't you care? But note, in this particular story, in all four Gospels, before Jesus ever spoke to the storm, he spoke to the disciples and said to them, Oh, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? And so Jesus got up, rebuked the wind and the waves, and the storm, completely calm. And here was the disciples' response. Remember, they, they'd already spent a lot of time with Jesus already. But it says the disciples were amazed. And they told Jesus, I don't think we know you as well as we thought we knew you. <laughs> You know, what, what kind of person is this? You know, and here's what I want you to catch today. Because for some of you, before the storm, we thought we knew who Jesus was. But during the storm, you learned a different part of who God is and all of us need to get to know. So, um, and, you're, and many of us today are kind of like, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the waves Obey him. Well, there are several different kinds of storms that all of us go through in seasons of life. Uh, the most obvious is that of a, a physical storm. And some of you are going through a physical storm right now. You came in here today and your body's hurting. And some of you are experiencing chronic pain. And chronic pain... Uh, it kind of it kind of gets it gnaws on you, kind of gets in your spirit. It starts messing with you really bad because it can it can even cause you to lose hope, right? And if that's you today, you need to know, like the TV commercial, Jesus gets you. You need to know that He gets you because He experienced it in all levels and all points. Another type of storm that we sometimes experience in life in the different seasons is that of an emotional storm. And the Bible says Jesus was despised and rejected. He was betrayed and a man of sorrows. And so many of you here today have are experienced this or have experienced it. You know what it's like to be betrayed by those closest to you. And you know what it's like to experience rejection. I mean, it hurts, right? Some of you are experiencing feelings and anxiety and uh, uh, feelings of anxiety and depression. And, and if that's you, again, you need to know that he gets you. Jesus gets you. And not only that, your church gets you. It's why we have a mental health center located right here on our campus. And it's why we recently even added Christian clinical physicians available several days a week here uh, on our campus for anyone who is hurting. Why? Because this is why Jesus came. If you read 
the, the letters in red, you'll know that uh, he's, he's, this is why he came. He came to heal those who are hurting. He came to bring hope to the hurting. Another type of storm that uh, all of us face from time to time would be that of a relational storm. Some of you are maybe going through a relational storm right now. How many of you have some crazies in your family? Let me see your hands. All right. No pointing. All right. Jesus had crazies in his family too. He really did. While he was preaching to the crowds, there were people in his own family going, he's out of his mind. I mean, can you imagine how that made Jesus feel? His own family. And of course, another type of storm that all of us have gone through and will go through and is experiencing the spiritual storm. In our story, the disciples asked Jesus, don't you care? Do you see what I'm going through here? Followed by another question, who are you and who is this? You know, it's interesting because storms have a way of revealing the depth of our relationship with God. You know that? When we go through storms of life, it reveals where we're at in our walk. And here's what I want you to catch today. What if the real miracle was not about Jesus calming the storm on the outside? What if it wasn't about stopping the wind and the rain? What if it was really more about what God wants to do on the inside of you and I? What if in whatever storm you're facing right now, what, what God is really wanting to do is a deep work inside of you in your theology of who God is so that you'll be able to stand firm and secure in life while you're in the, even in the middle of the storm? What if whatever you're going through right now is actually an opportunity for you to grow in your walk with Christ? And, uh, well, check out this incredible promise we have in the Lord. Hebrews 6, 19. We'll put it up on the screen for you. Let's say it together, one voice. You ready? We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Why does our soul need anchoring? Well, because there are times we have no control of the winds that's going on around us, the rain, the waves, all that's going on outside of our lives. And yet God has provided an anchor for us so that we can be secure on the inside, for we can be stable for the emotional, spiritual part of our lives. He provides an anchor for our soul and our spirit. The purpose of an anchor is to what? To attach it itself to something solid so that it won't experience, uh, so, so it will experience stability. And so if you throw an anchor, of course, over, as you know, over a boat, it's, it's going to eventually land on the bottom, uh, whether it be the lake or, or the ocean, and it'll find something solid down there to land on, on the ocean floor to land on. And once it finally lands, it's not going anywhere, right? Everything around it could be moving uh, in chaos, but that anchor is keeping you stable and secure. Well, this morning, I want to give you, if you want to follow around in your outline, I'm going to give you three ways that we can stay anchored in life storms. Three ways that you and I can stay anchored in life storms. And here's, here's the first one. Number one, we're anchored when we practice God's presence in our life, when we practice being in his presence. And here's the deal. You're going to have to do this to know that this is true, <laughs> all right? Uh, God has provided this anchor for us. The presence of God is always available to you and I, always in our lives, but we have to learn to cultivate it. And some of you, some of you here already practice this, and you understand it, and, and you'll, you'll know that you've experienced it when the rain comes and 
the winds blow and the storms look like it's going to take you out. And yet on the inside, you're experiencing this supernatural peace and you're singing, it is well with my soul, even though the storms and the winds blow it, all right? And that's because you've been in the presence of God. And in the presence, there's peace. Psalm 91 gives a wonderful promise from God's word here. We'll put it up on the screen for you. It says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High, other versions use the word dwell, those who dwell, so you gotta be a dweller. That means you've gotta take the time to hang out with God on a regular basis, learn to practice his presence, learn to abide in him. And it says those who live, those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will find what? They'll find rest. So the storm, it could be all around me, and yet my soul is at rest. In other words, let's finish this. Those who practice his presence, what? Will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Isn't that a beautiful passage? And here's the timeless principle. You might want to write this down. Are you ready? Peace isn't the absence of trouble. Peace is the presence of God. Amen? That's, that's where we find peace. It's not in God take it all away, it's in his presence. And once we learn to practice being in his presence, you'll find yourself securely anchored in this storm and you'll experience a peace, as the Bible says, that surpasses all understanding. Number two, here's a second way that we're anchored and that is we're anchored when we remember God's promises, when we remember his promises. And what is his promise? Well, it's found in God. It's in the word of God, all right? All of the word of God is his promise. And, and what provides uh, the stability and security that we desperately need during life storms? It's, it's the word of God. Let me ask you this. What have you been feeding your mind on most? Because that's probably going to determine the state you're in, your mind and your spirit. Now, if you're feeding your mind mostly on world news and all consumed with who might win the next election, man, no wonder your mind's all worried. No wonder your mind's all unsettled and upset and disturbed. So I just want to encourage you, uh, take an assessment today, all right? Just a personal assessment. Would you say that you're dwelling on God's word, you're dwelling in God's presence as much or more as you do the world's news and, and the rest. Of, if not, then something's out of balance, right? The psalmist said, I am worn out waiting for your rescue, but I have put my hope where? In your word. And so if, if you're going to balance this out and you're going to have peace and you're going to be able to be anchored in the storm, it's because you're anchored in God's word. Amen? So, uh, and you see, if we're not careful, our circumstances can get to speaking louder than God's word. And as a child of God, I just want to say this. Do not let your circumstances speak louder than God's word. So balance that out by being in his word more than you are in this world, in, in the world news and all that. And the way we, that's how we keep that from happening. Stay anchored in God's word. Number three, here's, here's the last way. We're anchored when we trust in God's process, when we trust God's process. Think about it. If the disciples had known that God was going to use that storm to teach them something, they would have cooperated with it, right? Which is why, before Jesus ever spoke the storm, that he spoke to the disciples. And I believe that's what he's wanting to do with many of you here today. Before he speaks to your storm, he wants to speak to you, his disciple. 
And what does he want to say? Well, he tells us in Romans 5 that we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. We can rejoice when stuff's not working out right. Why? Well, let's finish that verse. Because we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. So he says, rejoice knowing that our suffering is producing something. And let me just say that, say it this way. There are going to be storms in your life. That's just part of life. This ain't heaven. You're saying, Pastor, you're supposed to encourage me. I am encouraging you. It doesn't matter if you're a Christ follower or not. In this life, you will experience problems, trials, and suffering. And I love you enough to tell you that. Now, I personally do not believe, I don't think God causes it. But Scripture does tell us that he can use it. Now, he doesn't. He doesn't automatically use it. You, you've got a choice in this. I'm not suggesting that trouble automatically builds character. We still have a choice in this and whether or not we decide to anchor ourselves and put our trust fully in him. Personally, I know people who, who, who've been a Christian for 20 or more years, but they're not faring well in the storm that they're in. And they're wandering around in the wilderness and they're kind of lost. And this is what I'm trying to say. Trouble doesn't build character, it reveals it. It reveals it. Now it's up to us whether or not we want to allow God to use it to build us and go deeper in our walk. The question is this, when the storms of life come, and they will, am I going to trust in God's process? He's, he knows what he's doing, and he's doing something good in me. And am I going to practice his presence in my life? Am I going to spend time with him so I can have that peace? Because that's where it's found. It's not in eliminating the hard things that are in life. It's in being with him that we find peace. And thirdly, am I going to continue to renew my mind in, in God's word? Because if, if I've got stinking thinking going on, <laughs> I'm going to struggle. I'm going to think like the rest of the world. I'm going to have anxiety and fears and all kind of things. But if I'm, if I'm anchored in his word and his promises and believe it, believe it, he, what he is who he says he is, and he, he is faithful and he is true, that I trust in him. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for providing these ways for us to stay anchored in you. Lord, you love your children enough to show us how to do that. Even when all the chaos around us and the waves are coming and the rain's blowing and the storm's coming in, Lord, we can be stable and secure holding on to that anchor. Thank you, Lord, for providing that for us, these anchors. Lord, would you take this season that we're in what, and just tell him this morning, you know, this difficult season that you're in right now that's so uncomfortable, so painful, so difficult. And God, would you deepen my walk with you? God, would you help me to practice being with you, hanging out with you in your presence so I can experience this peace, your peace. To anchor, and would you help me to anchor myself in your word? And Lord, today I just invite you, do a deeper work inside of me. Right here in the middle of this storm, do a work in me. I want to get to know you better. I want to experience you in a deeper way. And God, I trust you. So use this storm that I'm going through to grow me and do your transforming work inside of me. I trust you, God. Make this your declaration, folks. Let's stand together. Let's sing it to him.